What's going on everyone? As you can tell from the background, I am no longer in Bangkok. Bangkok is just like every other metropolitan city in the world. A lot of options, big city, hustling, bussing, a lot of people. But after a while, living in a metropolitan city like Bangkok, it slowly and sometimes quickly wears you down. And plus I'm kind of going through some personal issues right now. So I'm doing what Bangkokians do best with their problems. They run off to the islands or in my case, ran off to rural Thailand. So that's why I'm here in Udon Thani, located northeast of Thailand, otherwise known as Isan. So I'm spending a couple of days over here in Udon Thani because most people, when they travel, they go to tourist attractions like Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket, but I've always wanted to come and check out Udon Thani, mainly because, well, it's local. It is local as hell. You're not gonna find any resorts. You're not gonna find big tourist attractions over here. It's all mostly local Thai. And from my first impressions of staying here already, it's very peaceful. It's very local. You're not going to see many foreigners around here. Don't expect five-star resorts coming out here. Just manage your expectations and just come stay in the quiet, chill area of Isan here in rural Thailand. People are really nice here. For my first day, you know, as I've got in, I checked into a three-star hotel over at Paradise Hotel. It's about $19 a night, pretty cheap. It's not too bad. But afterwards, once I checked in, I stopped by and rented a motorbike from a nice gentleman over at the city center. And I just, you know, drove around the town, spent some time eating at different restaurants, drove around the city center. I was expecting mostly farmland, but Udon Thani, I would say, is the capital city of all of the Isan region and all of Northeast Thailand. So you're gonna find the majority of the people living here in Udon Thani. I'm over here at this temple, an hour north of Udon Thani. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, but I'm just gonna show you these cool uh, Buddhist statues over here. But it's about 10 minutes away from the Thai Lao border over at a uh, city called Nong Kai. I'm just gonna show you guys around. We're gonna eat some good food. Maybe uh, grab a couple drinks and uh, yeah, this is the first impressions of rural Thailand. And so far, all I can really say is manage your expectations. This is going to be a chill, relaxing video. I'll be honest with you guys. I love it already. It's a great place to just kind of clear your head from any uh, personal problems that you may be having. Now for all of you guys that are watching, for all of you guys that are already interested in Thailand, it's no surprise that Thailand is a country known as the land of smiles. And that is because, well, I'm pretty sure that wherever you're traveling to, whether it's in Bangkok or Phuket or Pattaya, the person that you come to contact with is most likely from the Isan region of Thailand. They're either from Udon Thani, Khon Kaen, Kalasin, or, all, or some of the other neighboring provinces. The most friendly and hospitable people come from this part of Thailand. A lot of these people, when you're going to these high tourist attraction areas and you know, all over Thailand, you're gonna come from people, you're gonna encounter people from Isan helping you. A lot of them working mostly in the service and hospitality industry. From my experiences, from all the people that I've spoken with so far, these people really are some of the most friendliest part of people in Thailand. Thais in general, they're just friendly people overall, but I find that the most kind-hearted, friendliest, and most hospitable people come from this part of Thailand, the Isan region of Thailand. And that's one of the reasons why I live here in Thailand. It's because I like being around friendly, hospitable, kind-hearted Thai people, because deep down inside, I'm a cold-hearted bastard. Not by choice. You know what I just thought of when I first came here is that what if these statues in front of us came to life and started attacking us. That would literally scare the shit out of me. Like imagine the seven-headed serpent just come to life and started terrorizing you. I don't even want to imagine that. All right, as beautiful as this place may be, I'm having these weird thoughts and imaginations of these statues coming to life and chasing me down and disfiguring me and cannibalizing me. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. It's a lovely, Lovely statues, but I'm getting kind of scared right now due to my own thoughts, so let's let's get the hell out of here. What the? So I drove past this, it looks like an abandoned 747 cafe. 
So I'm, <laughs> this is really common in Thailand where you drive on the opposite side of the shoulder. So I'm just violating everything, but dude, check this out. It's like a abandoned Thai Airway 747 purpose as like a cafe maybe. Whoa. This is actually pretty cool and I can't multitask, so I need to stop doing this. Yo, check this out. There's like a car wash over here. Bam, a prop plane. That's so crazy. All right, bye-bye plane. I swear to God, Thais have like the most innovative thoughts when it comes to cafe and decor. Who would have thought just putting a uh, abandoned 747 as like a cafe prop. Good times, good times. All right, now back on the road. All right, so I just entered this complex to grab some lunch. It's interesting, I come over here, there's like a basketball court stadium over here. I'm gonna be grabbing lunch at this place called Samui and Sun, known for their premium Isan dishes. And there's a bunch of other nicer restaurants out there, but uh, we're gonna focus on this one for now. This is the interior once you come in. Of course, you're playing traditional Isan music in the region and yeah, pretty simple. This place I noticed has more premium pricing, 270, 285, 285. So about like, I don't know, let's say like eight bucks or so. But uh, I ordered the, I ordered two dishes. I ordered the minced pork and tamarind relish with crispy pork belly because mugrop, crispy pork belly, I love it. So I've grown up eating crispy pork my entire life. And I ordered this, uh, I think it's kind of like a steak salad. It's not on the menu, it was actually on I'm gonna bring you guys over here. It's actually on this board over here. So I ordered, I can't retie, but this one over here, 385 baht, so like an $11, $12 dish. Definitely more on the premium side, but like I said, highly recommended, highly rated. It's on the Wang Nai, which is like, I guess it's like the Thai version of the Michelin guide. So it's on the Wang Nai recommended listing. So we'll see how it goes. Can't wait to try this place out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am seriously in heaven right now lunch has been served. Uh, this smells super fragrant. I just love the aroma of this beef dish. Uh, I don't know what's it, what it's called in English, but I'm gonna put the Thai name of it right here. So we got the beef dish and, oh my God, I'm salivating with this crispy pork dish. Look at how juicy this bad boy. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not joking when I say this, but I think this might be one of the best meals I've had in Thailand. So good. So good. Wow. This is by far one of the best crispy pork bellies I've ever laid in my mouth here in Thailand. That's a little weird what I just said, but oh my God, the most succulent, best pork belly I've ever had in all of Thailand. This is a good spot. I'm gonna shut my mouth. I'm gonna devour these dishes. I'll catch you guys later. So here we have two dishes, an entree, water, and rice. Total is 845 baht, seven percent. So that's about, mm, I think, spent about 27 US dollars, something like that. More of a premium place. Definitely check it out. It's about right, but highly recommended. Oh. I must say, that was one of the best meals I've had in a very, very long time here in Thailand. Not to say that Thai food isn't good. Thai food is one of my favorites, but this spot, oh my goodness, man. If you guys ever come down to Udon Thani, this is a must, must visit spot, all right? You won't regret it. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go rest up for a little bit. We'll see what we do later tonight. We'll see. Check back with you guys later.
So as I'm experiencing my final moments here in rural Thailand, here in Udon Thani, all I really have to say is that this place is a very calm, down-to-earth, sleepy city. It's a nice change. There's barely any traffic compared to, let's say, Chiang Mai or in Bangkok. And this is what I would imagine a traditional Thai city would be like. This is, to me, this is what I would assume the real Thailand is like here in this region of Thailand. Not one that has been completely bastardized or neutered for tourism, like in some places in Bangkok or Phuket, Pattaya. This is what I would see traditional Thailand would be like. The Thais do a really good job catering to foreign clientele. I mean, if you go to places like in Bangkok, you know, you got Prom Pong for Japanese clientele, you got parts of Asok, Nana, even Soy Cowboy for Western expats and tourists. You know, you got uh, you got Nana for the Indian slash Middle Eastern clientele. But here, you don't really see much of that here in Udon Thani. Maybe there's one street for some of the older expats, but that's just a very small fraction encompassing all of Udon Thani around here in the Isan region of Thailand. You know, from what I've seen, it's just very calm, quiet families and friends getting together, having a nice drink, eating a nice meal, and just kind of enjoying themselves in this quiet, sleepy city in this part of Thailand. You know, the more I think about it, the more I can see myself returning here to recharge more and more, to meet some nice people and to chill at like a massive, huge park here in Udon Thani. You go to parks around Bangkok, ton of people, which is understandable because it's such a huge, it's such a huge population, but over here, it's barely anyone. It's good to just recharge your battery for a bit and just to experience more cultural stuff in this part of Thailand. I can love it here and happy. I can definitely see myself returning back here in a couple months or maybe sooner than that. Man, I fucking love Thailand. This country makes me happy.